as an animator, it's probably the greatest film in terms of character development and how characters play against one another. The animators poured their whole heart and soul into every scene in that movie. Well, The Jungle Book was my first Disney film, the very first one, so of course that leaves a huge impression on you. I was about 11 years old and I had little pocket money. So me and a school friend went into the next town and uh, saw The Jungle Book and my life changed. Walt got something out of us that we didn't even know we had. Walt's holy grail was to make great pictures. Walt could put his fingers on the total theme of a picture in a story so quickly. It influenced me all the way to go for the simple story and strong characters. The thing that really attracted me was just the magic trick of, of, of being able to imbue what were obviously drawings, like real sort of weight and muscles, but only defined in like a few lines. And it was just such a like, how do you do that? Anyone that worked on Lion King obviously went to Jungle Book and go, well, this is how good it can be. We can't help by being completely drawn to the work that these guys did. It's really about giving character soul. And, and that's what Jungle Book did so well that was so inspiring. It did inspire me to become an animator. If you like to draw the way I see it, there's no higher accomplishment than to go into animation and make those drawings come alive. Since this was the last film, the last feature that Walt was really involved with, I think his stamp is on the strength of the personalities. I think that's what really shines through more than anything else. It's not the flashiest story they did. It's not the most grand artistically, but I don't think that there's ever been a better showcase for character animation. One of the things Walt Disney always remarked over and over again in story meetings was, we've got some great characters here, we've got some great personalities, I want you guys to take advantage. And I, I recall Walt's words, he said, give me some good stuff. A lot of putting personality into animated characters comes from the design, obviously, and they had Ken Anderson on The Jungle Book, who did these incredible first-pass sketches at the designs for these characters. Ken was just a, a master at coming up with a quick statement that read a certain kind of personality. There's a drawing that he did of Shere Khan where he just looks incredibly haughty and he's got this nose stuck up in the air and his chin is sticking out. Jungle Book came at a very interesting point in the evolution of animation at Disney. Walt, in some ways, knighted a group of artists all at the ultimate pinnacle of their career. Wooly Reitherman, who was also one of Walt's nine old men, was the director. He was this very weathered pilot who was also an animator and then went uh, into the service during World War II. And they would work closely together with one another. Frank and Ollie certainly worked the closest. And then there was, I think, Milt maybe a little bit uh, proving his, his own worth out there. And there was, I think, like a healthy competition sometimes between uh, these, these animators. So on us, we did the elephants. He had a great animator helping him, Eric Cleworth, who, who never gets a lot of credit, but Eric Cleworth also did some beautiful scenes with the elephants. Um, but they were supervised by John Lounsbury. I just remember being absolutely delighted by John Lounsbury's animation of these these elephants, uh, Colonel Hathi, and he says he's he's marching along, and it's just like whoa such weight and power and strength to these characters. When I got to the studio, I met John Lounsbury. He had these great thick pencils that he was drawing with that I ended up buying all the rest that, that there were of that pencil, and that became the pencil for me to animate to my characters. Then there was Milt Call's uh, incredible design. Milt you know, primarily did everything on Shere Khan, all that phenomenal stuff with Ka. Milt Kahl is all over this movie in every possible way, and he is really the animator's animator. His, his draftsmanship is brilliant. I've been through the Disney Animation Research Library looking for a bad Milt Kahl drawing, and I have yet to see one. <laughs> they don't exist. Um, I give up. The guy was flawless. Milt Kahl was doing a lot of um, animation on all the characters to sort of set them up and then they would pass it off to, to the other animators say, okay, this is it, I'm gonna go do it. 
I don't think it's possible to be a, a top a, a, a top-notch animator without being a very excellent draftsman. You have to be able to draw these characters in order to, in order to move them around and, and uh, articulate them, you know? So you, there's no way of doing it unless you draw very well. Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson worked very close together, you know, for their whole careers. Frank and Ollie animated about 50% of the movie. The animation on Blue is probably Frank Thomas's finest. I checked out of the archives the drawings of Ollie Johnston's of the little girl at the end, and there was this simple elegance to his drawing that uh, I went back and looked at again uh, when I was designing Ariel and the Little Mermaid. Um, I don't know. There, there, it's, it's the high, it's the high water mark of design and character really blended well together. Uh, I don't know that we've ever done better than that. It's influenced me in every character I've, I've ever done. I mean, uh, just the level of understanding of how to portray a character, how to make it appealing. They animated roughly half the movie between the two of them over the course of a very short span of time. Even their name is like one name, Frank and Ollie, in there. Their offices were right next to each other. Uh, you would always see them in each other's office talking about an idea. It seemed like they developed this way of thinking that really went back all the way to uh, when they started here at the studio. And they're brilliant animators, both of them. You get the feeling that they were constantly kind of showing each other their stuff and, and getting uh, the other's take on, on a scene. I think I'm most proud of the fact that between the two of us, we got that real warm friendship to come through. And that's what we wanted. We were both striving for that. And we both did practically all of the bear and Mowgli. And we felt would be the heart of the picture and the warmth in a picture is what Walt always wanted us to get. I attended a lecture that Frank and Ollie gave uh, for the animators union out here. And they ran a clip of Baloo introducing himself to Mowgli. And I remember thinking, wow, it's just a pile of drawings. It's just a pile of drawings and look how full of life it is. The expression always begins with the eyes. Walt always told us the audience watches the eyes and you better watch them too. The eyes really reveal more than any part of the rest of the face, what the character is thinking. Now, in the case of Shere Khan, he's very cool, very confident. He doesn't have to open his eyes wide. But poor Ka over here has quite a problem, and he's worried, he's concerned, he's uh, trying hard to come up with some kind of an alibi or an excuse. It gives your animator a wide latitude of expressions. The one that kind of clicked into me was Jungle Book, and, and I think it was because it's not the strongest story they ever did, but the acting, I think, is at the very pinnacle of any film acting uh, done in animation. There's uh, acting performances left and right, um, a blue feeling, the heaviness of having to tell Mowgli that he has to take him back, um, the imperiousness of Shere Khan. And also the art in that scene, the way the tiger is coming in, lying down, the way he's drawn. When he's doing this scene, you know, and he's looking at this, this antelope, and he's doing with just the shoulder shift. I mean, how powerful is that? You know, that is just an absolutely awesome scene. And Ollie Johnston, I'm sure he, he told you guys this too, he said this years and years ago to me. He said, um, he said don't animate drawings, animate feelings. Yeah. And it took me about a decade to understand what he really meant. Because you think, as a young animator, what, what, what is he talking about? You animate drawings. You draw, and those are going to be animated. But I think he was talking about more of, uh, about internalizing the character, feeling the character, and then drawing it. The key to these characters is making them think and the making the expressions on their face that register what they're thinking, what their feelings are, what's going on in the mind. And I think that's the key to Disney animation and what Walt always asked for. The Jungle Book's really an animator's movie. I think that's why so many animators gravitate to it, because it really boasts possibly the best character animation the studio ever did. When uh, 
King Louis is dancing around, you know, the weight you get on his body really feels like an orangutan's body. And yet he's caricatured and he's still his own personality. I was just amazed at the type of life they could get in the characters. They were just bursting with it. I think the most direct influence I've gotten from the movie is appreciating its technique. I've studied lots of it frame for frame uh, just to see how they got certain things. There's nothing spontaneous about the medium of animation. Animation is, by its very nature, is a slow kind of thoughtful medium where you analyze something and then you perfect things. But Jungle Book feels kind of spontaneous. There's a um, looseness to the performances and uh, a lightness to them. And that is something that I've tried to have in my work. As you work on a character, you develop the character, you begin to feel like a parent. And you work so hard to make him come to life up there on the screen. Uh, you feel like it's someone you know very well. And you enjoy, you have to enjoy working with them. And when the picture's over, there's always a sad moment as you finish your last scene because you know that's the last time you're ever gonna see that particular character. He may live in your mind from then on, but you'll never really be working with him in a creative sense.